Welcome back, everyone, to the most serious of games. Everyone has to die. Okay, so we've seen most of the of these paths so far, though it looks like that there are some endings we haven't gotten, one, two, and three. So again, let's work from left to right and see what we find. In this leftmost, we had the decision of saving Christina or Steve, and we saved Christina. What would have happened if we saved Steve? Okay. So we remember Steve dramatically sacrificing himself to save Christina. So let's see. We can... Oh yeah, we can go in here, and we can lock the door, and that's it. Goodbye, Christina. As Steve, yes, cowardly hide hiding behind a locked door, letting her die. How does Steve feel about this? See, I don't know why people are acting like we're doing that. It's not like we force Steve to go into the closet and lock the door. Steve, in denial about the death of Christina. Even though they had uh, such an antagonistic relationship, we see that Steve actually does care. Oh, and he found one of the blue files. Wouldn't it be much more useful if somehow we could get all of these blue files at the beginning? Have all the security codes? Oh, Steve. Yes, the experiment with the cockatiels. That sounds like the most adorable experiment ever. Is this supposed to be an evil company? Doesn't sound like it. Bought six million cockatiels and trained them all to say different words. What? One of the cockatiels already knew? Uh, some kind of machine, I don't know. It's a good question. What kind of machine does that? a bird-killing machine unless it can say a certain phrase. <sighs> Gasp! That means that she's alive, obviously. Yes, uh... No, we don't doubt you, Steve, that that's what it says. I guess maybe we should let Steve hold on to his, uh, to his hopes. Yes, Steve does certainly be seem to be disconnected. And we're going after Steve. So that's Steve's end. Where he makes the mo he makes a rather odd leaps in logic to feel that Christina must still be alive and runs off somewhere. And cockatiels. We know about the experiment with cockatiels. All right, let's go up to this one. So in this one, Christina, Lionel, and Troy are alive. And we had to decide who we were going to save. We can see the decision we made was to save Troy over Christina. So what would have happened here if we let Troy burn? Yep. Troy's confused. Okay. So here we had to make the decision. So what if we lock Christina's door? And then turns on the water. Turn off the water. So now Troy is dead. 
and Christina is okay with that. And Lionel's very happy about that. He doesn't like what's been happening at all. Of course, we know that Troy did want to die just to try to make this whole thing end. And those messed up things you do here, like teach cockatiels to speak words. That's a very profitable business, I have to say. And okay, two casualties are unavoidable. Didn't we have this before? Well, either way, everyone had to die. <coughs> well, yeah, it was it was these two same characters who both died uh, in the other path, right? I believe so. Like it says once again, mystery is not yet solved, but we're very close to solving it. And we have one more path to take. That is, we had a choice between Lionel and Troy. We so chose to save Troy. But what happens if Lionel is the one to survive, the one to get out at the end? He's the only one that we haven't done. Does he know something that will shed light on this whole situation? Let's lock his door and find out. So we can lock his door, and then... Even though Troy's door is not locked, we can have him turn on the water. I don't know why he would do that. And then in his last act, we can have Troy turn off the water. And Lionel survives. What does Lionel think about that? He thinks that this is just fine. He likes everything that's happened so far. Does he know the information that we're looking for? Yeah, we figured. She didn't seem to know too much except her mother being killed by her company and her brain being removed. Time travel. Yes. That's a worthy goal of any evil corporation. Time travel involving cockatiels. Mm-hmm. As in, it's not actually a phone booth or, or an old car or something like that. That does sound a little familiar, doesn't it? Someone's uh, consciousness being in a different period of time than their body. Hmm, I don't know. Sounds something that we've heard before. Yeah, that'd be unpleasant. Go forward in time in a week. Oh no, my body. So I guess basically the original consciousness dies when the time-traveling consciousness goes into the body then, if I'm what they're saying. Oh, there's the title of the game. With the machine, no one has to die. Yeah, we don't know where it went. Think it worked? Maybe. The Tempest Room, as we know, is where this time travel machine is supposed to be. It looks like Lionel is going to go through himself, and Visitor is going after him.
Oh, and now that we've completed all of the ends, the final timeline has appeared. So what would that mean? On the first screen, we can see that we filled out the timeline tree, but now a new one has appeared that's separate from the original. And this has a straight line, no paths. Now why would that be? Oh, and for the first time, the visitor starts off already knowing who Lionel is. Oh, and Troy's happy because everyone remembers. And even though Troy died in some of those timelines, he's still here. And that's right, since this is Steve from a previous timeline, he is still under the impression that Troy set the fire because he was told that at the beginning of Steve's original timeline. And in each of the previous timelines, as we know, someone found a new security code. Now we have four, and that of course means that no one has to die. The computer says, no casualties. Right, no one has to die, that's the name of the game, Troy. All we needed was time travel. So we can lock these doors. Turn on water. Turn off water. And no one has to die. Can we still kill Steve? No, the computer will not let us do that because it has determined that no one has to die. Yep, that's, that's what you said. Cockatiels were, were involved somehow. Her brain traveled through time, obviously. Alright. Let's lock all the doors. No, we traveled backwards and seemed to work just fine. So because I guess there are so many split timelines that if you try to go back in time that you don't know which one you'll end up in, I guess, is what they're saying. So this is basically like that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where Worf was traveling between universes. It's always kind of messy when you kind of introduce that kind of timeline. And everyone experienced a timeline where everyone died. So it, there are plenty of timelines in which all these characters died, but the particular versions of these characters that are here now are the ones that survived their own specific timelines. And as they say, there was a very low chance that all of them would end up in the same universe. But that's what happened. And it's only through that that no one has to die once again.
Okay, so we want to, let's see, yeah, put them all in there. The only one who's not in a locked room is Christina. And let's see, Troy has access to the water, so we'll turn that on. And we can turn that off. And it's a happy ending, because no one had to die. Apparently a lot of cockatiels died, though. But Christina has gone back to the Tempest entrance. And Christine is very set on using the machine to find her mother. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. I don't think we can stop her. What would we even do? And that's the end. That seems, I don't know, a little selfish, considering that when she goes back in time, that means that will eliminate this timeline as well. The timeline where everyone survives. And that's it. Apparently that's everything. Are we still locked in the room? Uh, we don't exist in that timeline anymore, Middle King Kirby. When Christina goes back in the Tempest room, this timeline gets erased, like every other timeline has so far. Uh, so it didn't actually matter that we got out of the room or not, because that timeline's gone. Uh, so that's No One Has to Die. It's basically like a little short story, flash game. Uh, as, as some people have mentioned, it seems, you know, it's very reminiscent of things like 999 and VLR with, uh, with the multiple timelines thing, especially with the tree pathway viewpoint that we see here, which apparently is very similar to what is in VLR. So, eh, was there a timeline where we played a different game instead of this game? No, unfortunately, Velomo, in all timelines, we ended up playing No One Has to Die. Except maybe ones where it was not suggested to me. In that case, I would not have known about it. So maybe there are cases in which we would not have played No One Has to Die. Maybe there are timelines where that happened. So, like I said, a little short story. Uh, not a big thing, but I thought it was kind of fun for a little bit. So, that's it for No One Has to Die. And indeed, no one had to die in the end, except that none of that actually mattered because Christina went back anyway, so all of our efforts were for naught. We'll be back in a little bit with something maybe a little uh, more, more leaning towards, uh, towards something spooky, something horrific, maybe, I don't know. Be right back with something else. See you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm.